Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. You can see I'm right here by these incredible double junipers at my campsite. There's my van over there and in the distance there is Lower Sunset Lake. As far as where I am, I'm off of Tamarack Road, which is off of Blue Lakes Road, which is off of Highway 88 or Carson Pass, which is south of Lake Tahoe in California. So that gives you a sense of where I am. And this is a very remote lake. I found this beautiful campsite. There's nobody on the lake that I can see. And what I'm going to try to do is hike around the lake and I have no idea whether I can do that or not. There's probably going to be some obstacles to get over. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of bouldering. If I don't do it, I'll just turn around and come back. I do know that there's a road below me that goes between the two lakes, the upper and lower Sunset Lakes. And it looks like they're dammed, so they're man-made lakes, reservoirs probably. And let's go check it out and see what we find. Okay, so just leaving camp now and I'm going to walk down the hill. I can already see the road down there. I don't know if you can see it. And we're going to catch that road, and that's going to take us west. And I should be able to cross the water that's between the two lakes. And I think that's going to either involve getting my shoes wet or taking them off and go barefoot. I'm wearing long pants because of the mosquitoes. Otherwise, it would be a good day for shorts, and it would have been a good day for me to bring my water shoes, which I didn't, but that's okay. Okay, I actually found the road, and I just crossed it, but I saw this campsite right here that's on the other side of the road from where I am. And to be honest, it's probably just as nice as mine. And it's a little bit closer to the lake. Nice and breezy here, which is what you want in mosquito time. Okay, so I found the road that runs between the two lakes. This is the upper Sunset Lake right here. And there's the moon up high. You barely see it with my wide angle. And then this is the little waterfall that goes down to lower Sunset Lake better shot of the moon with more of a telephoto. Okay, so this is the thing I've got to cross and it looks pretty sandy so I might just take my shoes and socks off and see how that goes. If it's rocky I just take my socks off and leave the shoes on but let's try it barefoot and see how that goes. Alright, so the crossing went really easy. Some of you might be wondering why I took the time to take off my shoes, keep everything dry, and just not walk through wet. And the truth is, it's just a comfort thing. If I was in a hurry, I had a long way to go, and thought time was precious, I'd just walk through with the shoes. The thing is, it's warm enough and dry enough up here, and windy enough that anything you get wet is going to eventually dry off. It's not cold or anything like that, so that's not a concern. But anyway, we're walking along the road now. I'm going to be on the west end of the lake here pretty soon. And I think we're going to actually be walking on the dam, but we'll check it out. There's a nice view of the west end of the lake as we cruise around. And you also, from the campsite, you probably notice that little island out there. A more ambitious swimmer type might want to go out to that. I don't think it's the day for that for me, though. There's a beautiful view of the island. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. There's the island. Little tiny thing. Okay, this appears to be the outlet of the lake. So there's another little water crossing here. It's really shallow, but it'll get my feet wet, so I'm committed to keeping them dry, so off come the shoes again. Okay, here we go again. This is probably gonna be, yikes, kinda of slippery. So the caution is in order, but like I said, it's really shallow. It's like ankle deep, easy going. And that's about it, and there it is behind me. Pretty easy. Okay, so that's two water crossings. A lot of lakes only have two, just an inlet and an outlet, but of course it is possible to have multiple inlets and multiple outlets, but we'll see. But I think now is the part where it's going to get a little bit more bushwhacky and climby because I have to go over these rocks. And there is a little bit of a use trail here, so I'm probably not the first person to walk around this lake. There's a lake over there, and we could try to walk around there, but these boulders that are there the alternative is to stay high and go up above here. Obviously the lower route is more interesting, so let's try that. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. This is definitely the way to go. Actually, there's a fire pit down here, so somebody's probably driven to that open area that we were just at. 
And there were some people there yesterday that I saw just chilling there, but you could certainly hike in just a short distance to here, have this incredible view. Here's the fire pit. There's a nice flat rock you can walk out on. And there's what appears to be the man-made dam right there. That's what I believe anyway. As we look around this way, those clouds are incredible. And then there's the island. And you can see that kind of thick juniper up on the hill there, right in the middle of the frame. And the van you can see is just to the right of that. So I'm very quickly halfway around the lake. Here's another beautiful flat spot just right next to the one we just saw. And you know, it's like a little bit of a problem with mosquitoes this time of year, late June, but you know, you do get the wildflowers, which is incredible. Just lots of really small, intricate flowers. You can just look and see the background of the water. I'm not sure if these will focus. And if I swing around just behind the campground, you can see these beautiful boulders. This is the way I almost went. I'm glad I didn't. It looks really rough. And this part along the lake is really nice. And you can see these beautiful juniper trees that are common in this area. And now I am walking across what I believe to be the man-made dam. It's just kind of a hump to keep the water a little bit higher and then they use that other outlet. And I suspect down below here was probably the original old school outlet for the lake. Here's a little, some sort of drain pipe, I assume. It's really windy right here because it's just open. You can see the water. There's no white cap, so it's less than 10 knots, but it's probably a close to 10 mile an hour wind. Wildflowers are pretty happy here. There's a lot of these yellow ones. If you look closely, you can see some purple ones that kind of look like miniature lupines. Something like that. And the yellow ones are some sort of composite. This stretch here looks like it might be a little bit tricky, but we'll figure it out. Well, it's not as bad as it looks because there's a low route over here. This makes it nice and easy. Don't even have to go over those twigs there. We just take this right hand route here. We're gonna stay close to shore as long as we can. I look across the lake, I can see, I probably can't see it with a camera, but I can see where my van is. Right there-ish. And we are about halfway across the lake already. And I was looking at these rocks and I realized, hmm, it's probably not gonna be easy, but so far it's been quite easy. There's the first little dam there. And just behind this tree, I'll see if I can walk around here a little bit. Just behind this tree on the right here is the one we just came across. Okay, here's where you can see there's the lake there and it gets really brushy and dense. And then there's a big rock cliff back through those trees. So that looks really rugged, but what doesn't look rugged is going up here, going up high. So I'm gonna go up high by those trees on the left side of the frame. And that should be the easy way get through the forest right there but instead I'm gonna stay a little bit higher and the reason is I just like the openness up here I'll get better views this is why cross-country hiking is really fun is you get to choose your route you don't need to follow a trail this is just beautiful you can see I'm above the lake now and I found a route I've kind of curved back a little bit toward the lake and I found a route through the trees here that skirts up against this rock here. I could climb up on it and get a view, but I'm not worried about that. We'll get a great view in a minute. Really nice stand of wildflowers here. And that's the direction we came from around that rock. Now I'm up high on the rocks and walking back toward the lakes. If you look at the lake there, you can see there's the little island right there. We're getting a nice view of it because it's on the sunny side. Here's a better view of the clouds and the island. There's a nice stand of flowers growing next to that dead stump there. And I realize now I'm on the uh, part of the land that jetties out into the lake. And so when we continue along, we have to actually go, you can see the lake goes deeper that way. So it's a little longer to get around. I didn't know if I was on the lake alone, but it turns out that I'm not, because I just noticed there is somebody camping just to the left of this dead tree that you see in the frame. I'm gonna zoom in. There's some sort of blue awning or something over there. 
That's the only person I've seen so far. I have to be careful to stay away from that camp when I go by. I'm really pleasantly surprised how easy the going is. And that's partly because this is a really healthy alpine forest. There's a lot of floor space and I'm at just about 8,000 feet. So the vegetation tends to be a little less dense. Of course, that makes the hiking much easier. The other thing I've noticed is almost any lake you visit, there's gonna be some sort of use trail around the lake, but there isn't on this one because it's just so remote. One of the things I'm really most impressed about is these incredible juniper trees. You can see one right behind me there, the sun peeking through the top. These old trees are amazing. I have no idea how old that is, but it's probably hundreds of years old. And see one of the branches is falling down. We get to walk right under it. Okay, I can see the north end of the lake there and you can see it looks a little, there's some green stuff there and rocks on the other side that don't look very passable by the shore. But once again, if I go up here, it looks pretty wide open. So we're gonna do that. Okay, this is a little bit of an uh-oh. There's this finger of the lake that goes down this way and there could be some sort of drain out there. A lot of times when you see logs piled up, that means the water's moving that way and pulling the logs in. So, but it could be the wind. So we've got to walk around there and see if we can get across. And hopefully we're not foiled. Okay, it's getting really dense in here again. But I do see a high route that should work. It's dense in here, but it's not so dense that you can't get through, which is common when doing cross-country hikes. And this is why you're gonna have a lot of mosquitoes in the area. These kind of stagnant ponds are very pretty, nonetheless. All right, so this looks like it may go through. I kind of think I should be seeing the lake if it was this far, but I don't, I don't see any water. And right in the middle of the frame there, I see a pretty good way to go through. And then on the left here, you see these beautiful granite rocks. And right there, there's a huge solo tree, quite majestic. That's a great way to see a tree just standing alone and really tall like that. All right, so my route is kind of skunked. I'm not surprised by this, but you can see the stagnant water here, but it looks like I can get around it to the left. So I have to go further north to make this happen. Still looking like I might be okay. Okay, you can see the still water here that I'm trying to get across and you can see it goes a little further. I'd like to say it ends right here and it's clear up above by those larger trees, but there is no guarantee. And this is a little, a little bushwhacky, but still passable. Sneaking through some trees and dead wood and what have you, but it's all doable. Okay, now I'm gonna work my way over here. You see those sunny rocks over there? That's a big old slab. And maybe that's the end of it if I'm lucky. Okay, and here we are. It's just open enough to travel freely. Still in the dense stuff, but and it goes down again, which worries me. Right through those trees there, I see some wetness. You can see the glow there but I think I'll just stay left here and not exactly hug that rock, but go straight to where the camera is pointing down a little bit here around this broken off stump and then over that way. Beautiful tree growing out of the rock there. Another one of these junipers. Okay, I'm gonna climb up on this slab here. And hopefully get a, a view of the lay of the land so I can figure out where I can go next. Oh man, this is really bouldery and rugged, but it looks doable. All right, one thing for sure, I found the other outlet. Here it is, small creek flowing out. And this is probably the crux. Once I get across this, I'm, well, it's very dense over there. I'm not out of the woods in a literal sense, but it might mean that things improve slowly as I work my way around. This is gonna be a little bit challenging probably. Let me look at this and see if I can figure out a way to get across. Mm -hmm. 
All right, folks, it's time for a little break. Oh my God. That back there and those weeds was pretty terrible. It's choked with mosquitoes. I just found my way up on a slab here, so it's breezy enough and sunny enough so the mosquitoes, they're trying, but they're not doing much. And unfortunately, looking over that way, I see another bog, so that means I'm still having to stay away from the lake to try to get around those, but I think at this point I'm pretty committed, so I might look at the topo map and see what it looks like, but I'm gonna show you what that looks like in there. If you look down in there, you can see, well, it's all green. It's mossy on the water, but you see some water. So that means I'm not ready to start circling back southward yet. Okay, so consulting the map, I've realized I'm a little bit off course, which is easy to do when you're in the bogs down here. And it means I don't have to cross that other wetland that I'm seeing. And I have to backtrack just a little bit, get back down near the creek, and then head south from there and skip that other bog. In a way, that's good news, but I just don't know what I'm gonna find down there because it's pretty thick. Back on better terrain, although, I've got a down climb here a little bit, it looks like. There's the down climb down to there and then up through that away. way Or I can get to the top of this and go around, which I think I'm gonna do because I like the open area better. Such beautiful granite in here. Gotta come around the back side of this and climb up it. Hopefully I can get off of it. Okay, there's a new plan. Instead of climbing up to the top of that puppy there, I'm going to just go around the other side. It looks more benign on this side. So that's what we're gonna do. Those flowers on that rock. I realize now I'm back on track because I can see the lake as it comes back into view. So just had a little detour trying to find my way through the thicket, but it's all good now. And now I am on the east side of the lake and I'm actually heading back my campground you can look over there and see where I came and there's probably an easier way than what I did but regardless I had a good adventure and I'm back on track the east side of the lake is really nice because you're back up on slabs and it opens up and it's actually quite pretty so I really enjoyed this part of the hike and it was really nice to be out of the thicket and you can see the lake there and it's really very nice walking across slabs it's very nice and there's tons of wildflowers open country and easy going and I'm really enjoying this part of the hike. There's some wildflowers and an old log and the whole time I can see the lake and it's just so nice to be out of the weeds. And finally I pass the camp of those other folks and I kind of stay clear of them and then I come back to the roads and then you just kind of have to figure out where you are and which road to take that will lead me back to the campground. And it's quite easy and then I climb my way back up the hill to my campsite. And the next thing I know, there are the two large familiar juniper trees that indicate that I'm back at my campsite and it's been a wonderful hike. Well, thanks for coming along on the video. I want to go over a few safety items and uh, just discuss a few things I did well and a few things I kind of was remiss on just regarding safety and hiking alone in a really remote place like this in the High Sierra. The first thing is like the SOS concern. Obviously you don't know if you're going to have cell coverage or if your battery is going to die. So what I use is this thing here. It's called a uh, Garmin InReach and it's basically a satellite SOS device. So when I'm hiking alone I really like to have this because if I break an ankle or break a leg or something I can't go on or something happens, get stuck in a boulder, I can call for help, whereas in a remote situation like this, if I was by myself, I'd be basically done. So that's a really handy thing. And sometimes you might think, well, if I've got somebody with me, I don't need that, right? Well, the nice thing about this is even if you're hiking with someone else, if you have a problem, that person can stay with you and help you out. Whereas if they go for help, it's A, it's gonna take a lot longer, and B, you don't have somebody with you. So that's a good thing. I did bring a little food, but not enough. When I got slightly lost out there on that backside when it was in the woods, I realized that I was missing some important items. One is just, you really should have enough food and clothing for uh, in case you have to stay overnight. I kind of didn't, the low last night was 57, so nobody's gonna die out here, but I, I would have been cold just in what I'm wearing and I would have run out of food, um, probably had enough water. But bring food and water 
and clothing for overnight if you're going to do a hike like this. Because I just looked at the lake and sometimes you look at it and you think, oh, it's really short, I'll be back in an hour and a half. But that's, you know, that's rarely the case, especially if it's an adventure like this and you don't know what to expect. The third thing was a comfort item that I forgot. I did put some of this on. There's a lot of mosquitoes down low in the bog. It's really nice here at my campsite. That's why I chose this. All right, well, sometimes you just kind of have to laugh at yourself. So I'm talking about safety and issues and stuff. And then my camera flimsy tripod gets blown over. So I lower it a little bit, so hopefully it'll be okay. But anyway, I was talking about, what was I talking about? Oh, the mosquito repellent. So I could have brought that. That would have been a good idea. The other safety item is this knife that I bring. And it's just really the only critters you probably have to worry about out here are wildcats, big cats, cougars, bears. I've seen a lot of bears and I've never had a problem with a bear. As long as you respect them and their space and mamas with cubs and all that, you know what to do, then you're probably going to be okay. But the wildcats are really unpredictable. And I've seen them, but they're the ones that really scare me. And coyotes and whatever don't really bother me. Not that this knife is going to save me, but it just gives me a, a way to defend myself in case there's an emergency. And then, of course, there could be some weirdo you meet out there, but just a safety item. Another safety item I would say is uh, when I got off course, I was able to look at my GPS device. In this case, I just used my phone because it was working, but I also have this thing. I was easily able to get back on course. I went a little off and I got back on. It was no big deal, but um, it was nice to have the GPS capability. If you like the video, please do like and subscribe. I appreciate that. And until next time, thanks for watching.